paid for your punishment, slave. I sometimes scream out, no. When really, I mean, yes. Yes, yes! And this is why we have the safe word. Until we hear the safe word, we will not stop. She's not a Christian! No! Safe word with Jason Rouse. Uh, Walter Mace. Uh, he's a Dutch comedian who I'd met in Holland, oddly enough, doing a Tumler's Comedy Club some time ago. How you doing, Walter? I'm uh, pretty good. I'm in the sun. Yeah, well, that's not going to last. So let's go back. What was it? This is like seven years ago. Yeah, you came uh, in Amsterdam, and you played Tumblr, the comedy club. Mm -hmm. And, and was, you're the only uh, you were the only you? you were the only friend I made. Yeah, <laughs> everyone uh, was afraid of you. <laughs> <laughs> because they uh, they have no uh, sense of humor. That so is the Dutch. When an intruder comes. With a sense of humor, this is immediate threat oh. for the whole career. Is it kind of like they're being exposed for not having a sense of humor? Yeah. Fuck. But it was cool. So this is what, 2007? Um, let's see. Yeah, I think so. Because that uh, was around the time I started performing in English. Yes, I think you just started. I think you maybe you had already been maybe about a year in in the English. So, I was uh, yeah, I, I was living in London at the time, and I get booked to do this gig in uh, in Holland, and I'm like, so, I'm so stoked. This is like it's gonna be Hoodrin, Hoodrin, if I remember correctly, whores and dope. Hoodren. Say it again. Hoodrin. Hoodrin. Yeah, it's whores. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. And we uh, we did a little video blog while I was in town, but we um, I did my shows. I bombed on most of them. The British people there, there uh, quite enjoyed it, but the uh -huh. Dutch looked at me as like some sort of sad child. <laughs> I, 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 I think you did pretty well, actually. Uh, I appreciate that. It was uh, not a personal right. best, but um, I was so stoked to be in the city. And then I think the following year we been booked to do uh i got booked to do the uh lowlands festival with uh um stan hope and uh and rick shapiro and all that we had a, quite a, a blast there and watched some bands and stuff but i show up in in holland uh it's gorgeous you know you hear all the rumors amsterdam but outside of the uh the whores and the weed it's quite a cool city and you're uh you're a cyclist so it's perfect for you yeah 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 the the city, it doesn't feel like a big city, so you can uh, be safe on a bike with a lot of bike paths, and yeah, it's a really nice place to live. So you're, you're, in, Ho you're in Holland, you, you were working as a, a bike courier, doing comedy, yep. and then you decide, yep. I'm going to start doing comedy in English, and you move to London, I think maybe shortly after I'd met you. Yeah, I, I first moved to Manchester Oof. because I oh. this place is so beautiful. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I heard you were you were living in like a shithole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I lived with four comics. We had no heating in the house. <laughs> so, in the winter, we were all uh, walking around in our duvets. No, <laughs> and I was. I was the king of the house because I had two duvets. <laughs> <laughs> like like uh, animal pelts. In the higher echelons. <laughs> That's fucked. So there were, it was very Game of Thrones around there. Who? Game of Thrones? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it was really uh, the last comic standing. Yeah. Who, like... who can... And I heard stories about uh, Steve Hughes who had been marked in his own house. Yes. And all this, and I thought, wow, that I want to be in that place. <laughs> but Manchester's cool. Like, I don't know. I obviously your living circumstances were uh, questionable, but uh, the comedy scene. <laughs> Manchester's got a cool comedy scene. Oh, the, 
the comedy scene is just fantastic. It's really, uh, it was like a warm bath, really. Mm. No joking there. It was, uh, uh, the, the gigs were just, re people really are into their comedy. Yeah, and, uh, Liverpool. For me, it was, it was quite easy as a foreigner also with a bit of anti-comedy to, to make myself understood. Yeah, and, uh, and they're way. Uh, I still, I still want to go back because the gigs are so. Yeah, they're so good. Yeah, they are very, uh, very fulfilling. Like you, even if sometimes the money's not that good, you're in a pub on a Wednesday in a small yeah. English town, and there's a hundred yeah. people stuffed into the club, and it's like a Saturday yeah. night. Yeah, it's great. They, they, and they've been looking forward to it, and. Uh, these people can take a joke, so they they uh, they're n not restricted by any you know uh, political correctness or something that hardly goes on there. Yeah, um, it was this working class audience that I really enjoy. I was going to say that, and I that seems to be coming up consistently in you know I think that's why Glasgow is so good, and Edinburgh, and Liverpool, oh. Newcastle. You know, uh, there's so many cities. I think it's just it's it's a disposition that working class people tend to have real problems in their life and not to get freaked out about jokes. Yeah, they are just very mature in their yeah. uh, thinking and taking a joke and in, in the uh, arts um, admiring a joke. So uh, yeah, they're the best audience. Like Glasgow, the stand in Glasgow is oh. one of my favorite gigs. Oh man, it's just. Uh, and it you can really, really destroy that room, and uh, yeah, yeah. Just, it it, uh, it looks like ever walk into to the stand when it's empty. It looks like sorry. it looks like a storage, like a, like there's there's yeah. the only thing that's going on in there and that's focused yeah. on is the quality of the comedy. Yeah, yeah, and, and they know their comedy. They so. know their comedy. Comedians, yeah. world guys that sell out stadiums do their DVD specials or their TV specials in that little room. Yeah, and I can imagine because it's it has a an electricity to it that you can't. Yeah, it's very special. Yeah, there's it there's just works very well. And how many cities did you play in London where you walk into these? Oh, you're doing uh, so and so town here. It's about four hours, and you show up and you're in a, a theater that's two hundred years old, and uh, you know all these famous actors and and so on, comedians have all come through there, and there's a sense of history when you walk up, like the Greenwich, uh, up the creek. Oh yeah, I was there uh, ten days ago. Oh, I'm jealous. How was it? Yeah, it was. Well, it, it was just a 10-minute spot, mm. uh, and it was my first gig after a break. I just needed a break, and uh, uh, I've got it on video, and it's uh, it's pretty good. Uh, I was really happy because it was, for me, like the signal that I really enjoyed doing this. Yeah, I, I went there. That was the first place I ever did comedy. Yeah. And well, that's when right. Malcolm Hardy was still alive, and... Uh, Jane, uh, my friend Craig Campbell's girlfriend. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know her. For, yeah, yeah, quite well. Um, I uh, Jane goes, go say hello to, uh, introduce yourself to Malcolm, and he's gonna put you on the show. And uh, I go, hi Malcolm, I'm Jason Rouse, and uh, Jane asked me to speak to you about getting on the show, blah blah blah. And he goes, uh, your friend Campbell's, and he goes, he's he's fucking my wife. And he goes, you're on third, and he walks away. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, Jane, is this, I didn't know how, I, I've just got off a plane, I've been in the country for two days, and I don't know, yeah. I, but I love that eccentric wildness that the, the you know, through Ireland, Wales, you know, England, uh, Scotland, they just have this kind of quirkiness that just works good for, com They're, a lot of them are really funny characters themselves in these pubs. There's no, there's no fear of uh, being a weirdo or, you know, being embarrassing. They yeah. Just, they drink, they drink enough for that, to make that disappear, and they, they're quite strong. They're quite mature because they are not afraid to uh, be, uh, be different. Yeah, I remember and, walking. You remember the uh, in Soho? There's one of my favorite bars, and if you're ever in London, 
uh, go to the Crowbar in Soho. It's like yeah, the best. We've been there. Yeah, yeah. Me, I didn't I bring you there or? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a long time ago. Yeah. I so, wanted to go to, sh- to sleep, but you were hanging out and uh, doing I heroin. Find you. you didn't want to go to sleep. I was, I was really exhausted, so I was like, can we go home now? <laughs> but maybe you thought we were getting in bed together or something. <laughs> I, I was going for that at all. I was trying to prolong going home because I was too, <laughs> too weak to struggle against you. Yeah. <laughs> I would have just faced the wall until you're finished. I forget where I... So we're... We're going to Soho, Rock Bar. What happened? The bathrooms are fun there. Yeah, they have a, a particular smell. There's a steel toilet. I think they're going through... Yeah. They got some plumbing problems. But, um, fuck, what was it's I talking... When you do comedy in these places, the smell of disappointment in the toilets <laughs> and all this, it's such a contrast with the great comedy. So you're doing up the creek. And it was the toilets were just uh, were awful. Really, it makes you puke. I'm, I have a strong stomach, but and then you do this great comedy show, and with these toilets, so it's like everything at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> Highs and lows. All the important so, things at the same time. Yeah, you're there's storming this gig, and if you smell like, oh yeah, there's the toilet again. Yeah, you can pretty tell. And another applause break. The, the, if you can smell the restroom when you come through the door, you're up for a good night. But there is no embarrassment. I remember walking down from, from the crowbar to, uh, down to Trafalgar Square to catch a bus. And was it Tottenham Court yeah. Road? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Walking towards Piccadilly Circus. And there's a lady. You know, keep in mind, just a few blocks from there is one of the most busiest centers of the universe, Piccadilly Circus. There's, and it's a Friday night, yeah. 2 in the morning. There's a girl in the middle of the sidewalk pissing so hard, gravel's coming up off the ground, and her friend's holding a jacket in front of her, barely covering her, and I look over and start laughing, and they look at me and go, what the fuck are you looking at? Yeah. I know, I'm waiting for the shit. (laughs) I'm waiting for, I want to see this chick have a dump on the sidewalk. Yeah. But you see that. How, How many liters of vomit... Do you think you've seen in London over the course of a year? Um, on the street, yeah, as much as being uh, airborne. <laughs> so, evenly, yeah. Um, what I found the funniest when you come back after a gig uh, driving through London, uh, like three in the morning, oh. that pe- guys want to fight the car. Yes. They want to fight with you. <laughs> on the street there's a lot so of they, they start to they just stand on the street and when you come over with the car they just don't move because they think they can handle you yes in the car yeah there's a lot of false sense of confidence in that city it's usually alcoholic <laughs> rage yes <laughs> well were, were some of the worst gigs that you had in london because as you you know you kind of tend to lean towards more of the darker blue comedy and uh, that also, as passionate as they are, sometimes you, you've shown up at the show and they've already been drinking since noon. So regardless, uh, they're yeah. angry. They haven't got their uh, chicken fingers and chips and they're pissed. And you go on and it's a bloodbath. Where was the worst? Um, the worst, uh, one of the worst I've found was uh, in a in a restaurant. <laughs> you just showed up drunk. A, a fun house comedy, it's called. Ah, and, I remember. And we had a, it was in a restaurant and I was opening and uh, people were still eating. And uh, oh, no. you have to kind of, yeah, just try to make them laugh in between the, the munching of the food and they were not facing the uh, the stage, so you were just an interruption to their lovely dinner. Oh, and nothing and nothing goes better with nachos and dick jokes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was just uh, you know you know when you're bad and you uh, you're just <laughs> tired or whatever, and you also know when you just don't stand a chance. There's yeah. No, uh, uh, 
possible comedy. Yeah, no matter uh, how you possible. approach. So you, you just you have no you just stand a, why why would you do the gig because there's you had, don't stand a chance. No, that was you remember Al Pritcher. Yes. New Ze- if a comic from New Zealand. He, uh, me and him, him and I had been booked to do the hyena in Newcastle during a oh, late, yeah. late, just before right, Christmas. Right. And it was, it was a fucking nightmare. The whole show was a disaster. There was almost three fights, women throwing up. The food was brought out. It was, it was so, me and Al were just like looking at each other going, I don't know what to fucking do. But thank fuck, yeah. though, the shows are at least... You're not grounded to a, an hour of a show. You're doing 20, yeah. maybe 30 minutes on these shows. And uh, yeah. I can weather that storm. But when you're pushing around an hour and they, they won't yeah. leave and they hate you, it's a fucking nightmare. Oh, Nottingham. I think that was the only comedy club I was banned from, Nottingham John Clears. They fired me on the Friday. I think I've been fired maybe twice in, in 20 years. And uh, wow. the Jungler's, yeah, <laughs> Jungler's fired you? Well, yeah, from that club. The, I guess they had had a oh, new, yeah. new manager at the time. And to be honest with you, there was a, a corporate table of people that wouldn't shut up. And I ripped on them. They ended up having to reimburse them and all this shit. I was told all by right. uh, Julia that they'd had made letterhead with my, with my, um, to apologize on my behalf. Near the end. Oh, right. Yeah, which I had nothing to do with. That was out of my hands. But I think did that's a, ever, around 2000. Did you ever apologize? No. No. No, but from a from a business perspective, they wrote a letter on my behalf as an apology to cover their ass huh. legally, I guess. Because some people wanted to sue and fucking nuts. But that's around 2007 is when the nerdy element started to come into comedy and this uh, this new wave of p- politically correctness and this fucking yeah. green friendly horseshit, and I started yeah. to see the pinch because then I noticed that some of the clubs were kind of like a little inconsistent. It's they had been to five years previous with taking risks and what have you, and um, to uh, I started to notice it. I didn't know what, what it was, but now it's clear to me. It was the early stages around 2007, 2008, I noticed in Europe that things were becoming pro- more politically correct. Yeah. You know, even in, even in places that are kind of working class. Like my hometown is uh, where I'm from, uh, where I'm now in uh, in Hamilton, it's a uh, it, it's 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 Glasgow, and I've right. been doing some of the same context of material, and they get some squeamish. They oh, I'm gonna I start yeah. scalding them that you're you're ruining everything. No ooh, no. oh ooh, <laughs> it's rude. <laughs> Mama. What's wrong with you? Why? Calling out a who? The ghosts of comedy past. Who? <laughs> What is it? Why are what? what um, why are people so full of fear? I I know what it is. Do you want to hear it? Yes, Bulli- bullies yeah. have become extinct. Yeah. Because there's so many legal repercussions. Yeah. That no one wants to get involved anymore. So it, they faded. They faded out the things like, how many child molesters do you think have created great artists? Well, look at. I'll start from the top. Oprah, <laughs> banged by an yeah. uncle. One of the richest, mm-hmm. Oprah Winfrey. Yeah. Banged by an uncle. Oh yeah. And now sure. the richest woman in the world. Uh, who is that? Oprah Winfrey. 
Yeah. She was banged by an uncle. So it pays off. It does pay off, but it's a long-term investment. Once you get through the, the tears and the shame and you got that kind of creative, you know, you might be able to play piano, but you do pee a little bit and you cry. Yeah. You have to start early. Yeah. If you've got one yeah. leg longer than the other, work at a step factory. Well, you're, so, how, you're, you're, how many meters are you? How many meters am I? Yeah. Almost two. Almost two meters. Do you know what that is? Yeah. There's 12 inches in a foot. Yeah, it's six foot five, I think. You're six five and 70 pounds. <laughs> yes. They call you the ferret down at the glory hole. Because you can get in anywhere. <laughs> but you... Uh, well, let, let's get back to perverted shit. Now, listen, you're you, not only you Dutch, but you grew up in Amsterdam, right? Uh, not really. I grew up in the north of, a, of the country on an island. And then I went to study in Utrecht. Okay. How far is the, uh, yeah. is there, how long is the ferry from the island to the mainland? It's uh, about two hours. Okay. So it, it's not a swim. No, you could do it. You could possibly also walk it when the tide is low. Really? You have to go through the mud. How, uh, could... is there an actual transport lane for that? Uh, no. No, so you die about a third of the way yeah. they crossed. Yes. Do you we tell this to tourists to go, listen, to walk across. Around, around 12 o'clock, you guys can come out here and walk across. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Guys out we there with a, to, having a picnic in his family out there thinking it's some sort of a law, exotic tourist attraction and now they're fucking dead. Yeah. And you, you just wave. Picnic sheet. You wave like from the shore. Tablecloth. Sorry? <laughs> you wave from the shore as they sink into the mud and the water swallows them. <laughs> yeah, we had quite a few Germans. Uh, we didn't get along really. And uh, they they would often get the advice to walk back to oh. Germany. Yeah, you so. you know that the uh, found some boots later. <laughs> some Gestapo hats. <laughs> do you, yeah. Do your parents? And some of our we, stolen bikes we retrieved. Do your grandparents ever discuss about the Second World War and stuff in Holland and? Yeah, I heard they were busy with helping uh, helping out the Jews. They uh, they uh, gave them food. I don't know if they gave them shelter. My grandparents had a farm. Mm. I, I think there were some Jews for for a little while. They hid them. Yep. Shit. They were the yeah the, the good good uh, folks. Yeah. Did they must have some wild stories? Like I, re I had a Dutch. Uh, shop teacher here in Canada and I remember he said he was a child during it and remember the tanks getting blown up on the dikes right he said the tanks would drive across the top of the dikes and they blow up blow up the tanks mm. wow you missed that one was he was he from Holland yeah yeah he was he was Dutch ah. Mr. Poot Mr. Poot yeah yeah all right he was uh, Poot. Mr. Poot. Is that how you say it? Yeah, it's double O. P O O T. Yeah. Poot. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Will you call yeah. him Mr. Poot? I don't know. I don't know a name. Uh, well, you got Poot. a bunch of uh, white trash kids in a Canadian town. They're not really looking to learn other languages. You know, if you tried to learn French, you were burned as a witch in this city. Yeah. So wow. you, how long were you in Holland for? Did you go specifically for the show business or would you just happen to gravitate towards Amsterdam? Um, yeah, I was uh, live, still living in Utrecht uh, when I started uh, performing in Amsterdam. And uh, I stayed in Amsterdam for four years and then I moved to the UK. And did, when, yeah. you, when you first got to uh, Amsterdam... Did you have a sex with a man or a woman? Uh, with a woman. He said. <laughs> he 
How many yeah, tourists? Sure. How many tourists do you think are tricked by guys in Amsterdam? How many tourists? What? Yeah. From from having straight guys banging dudes. All oh, right. The tricks. How many are tricked? You think? Yeah. How many guys walk away going? I gotta kill myself. I don't know really. I, uh, I, uh, the family that lives or works in the red light district that I hardly speak to them. Your so family? I don't know any statistics? Does your family really live near the red light district? Um, let's see. No. Your no, sisters know, are all prostitutes. I know some family in Amsterdam, but they don't live anywhere near. And your, how many people in your family have become prostitutes? Well, that I know of, I'm really. <laughs> yeah, that you know well, of, that you see. I, we we sell our minds, right? <laughs> Not a physical thing. I think we also really strange prostitute because I'm so tall. I yeah. Fit in the window. They'd have to put and a mirror. Like I have to bend down <laughs> and to say, "Hey, come in." Hey. You ever fuck a giant? <laughs> <laughs> the Japanese yeah. people are all crying near the window. Yeah, or then I would have this thing where uh, when I would fit in the window, I would have to be on my knees. Ah. So I'm basically begging them to come in. <laughs> <laughs> or they think you just do blowjobs. Yeah, <laughs> but then if I'm on my knees, I'm still not. I'm still at their eye height, so to speak. Mm. So. What it's really, it's not easy being tall, you know? Yeah, especially when you got the guy next to you, because the doors are very close together and well lit, and you could, there could be a German shit eater next door, and you got to deal with his politics. Yep, yeah, exactly, or hearing that they have a good time. <laughs> and you're with this client, and it doesn't really fly, you know? Yeah. The, and then you got the guy comes over banging on your window, crying, going, "Oh, the, he didn't, he didn't give me any tip. Am I not pretty?" He's got shit all over his face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now it's uh, you can always say the grass is greener on the other, uh, on the other side. Yeah, and, the, and there's no what's on the other side of that fence. Horse shit. <laughs> yeah. I don't like it. No whores. But uh, I, I have a question for you. Did you ever did you start a comedy in Canada? I did. Actually, oddly enough, in a, in a few weeks, it's going to be my twentieth anniversary of doing comedy. Whoa! Yeah, I started June twenty fifth, nineteen ninety six, in Vancouver. Wow. I'd left my uh, hometown to uh, pursue a life. So I left in 93, and I started in June in 96. I did my first show. You remember your first uh, joke? Yeah, I have both shows. My first two, maybe three shows on videotape. Um, I think it was something to would affect about having, wearing bicycle shorts with no right. underwear and being on the bus and people assuming that I had gum on my leg, but it was my bag hanging out. And I and I would be pulling on it and I and tugging in in the aggressive way like you'd pull a piece of gum off a sweater and realize it's my bag. Yeah. Rolled gum yeah, rolled in that, pubic that hair. Right away. Mm. You remember your yeah, yeah that was kind of my first stop. I did some impressions and um, various things. I really didn't know what I was doing. I'm still figuring it out, but um, yeah. 20 years ago. Uh, Want to hear my first awful joke? Yeah. Uh, I, I, at home, I have three things. That's a girlfriend, a television, and a dog. And the other day, that dirty animal shit on the floor. Uh, that's something my dog would never do. <laughs> 
That's cool. But you you always had like a very um, your your words were very you picked your words very carefully because it was key. You you didn't have a lot of on running stories that I remember. And keep no. in mind, when was the last time I saw you? I think we did a gig together in Newport. The near uh, it was the called that time of the month. Yeah, that's right. I remember it very well. Was it a good show? Yes, it was very good. <laughs> yeah, that was the beginning of We're the end. To... Yeah, Sorry. well, we we work well together. Like our normally, I kind of lean towards comics that you know are a good host or things like that. But our comedy, yeah. even though it's in the context of filth, it's it's it couldn't yeah. be more different. Yeah, uh, the way we present it. Yeah, totally. Yeah. But you took some time off. Uh, yeah. Well, you, you took a year off of comedy? Yeah, uh, that was the last... It's really annoying. I can hear myself back. Is, is that something no. you can fix? No. Shit. Is it echoing? Yeah, very much. Hold on a sec. I'm going to pop. Maybe I should. It was a really good show. Yeah. Um, there was, was a lot of... Crowd, but they went for everything. There was a lot of uh, places in the city that you'd show up and you're like, this is going to be crap. And then it would turn out to be a fantastic night. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that and the, the room doesn't really matter. No. It's just it's a fact and uh... shit. I. We sound like we we both had the same dog run away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There was a dog in the room. Could you take time <laughs> off? You you take time off because of what? You just getting sick of I it. Was Sorry? You were getting sick of comedy? I was uh, just tired of uh, the process of getting gigs, of emailing people and just waiting. Bullshit. To book me, uh, all the networking bullshit. Yeah, it's exhausting. And, yep. And uh, I did a run of gigs and it was very badly organized. Before I took a break, and I thought, yeah, there was a lot of shit going on. Yeah, the writing's on the wall. The UK comedy circuit. Yeah, it changed a lot. I remember I'd gone back to the comedy cafe, and they've moved, you know, a 150-seat room upstairs to a 75-seat room. Yeah. It was... That kind of stuff that happened in a very short time. Uh, clubs were closing and whatever. Yeah. So... The it was very disappointing, you know, and my visa expired around that time. As much as I was disappointed that I wasn't uh, going to be working in the, uh, the UK um, anymore in the near future, I could see the, 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 it coming down. Because we, remember when yeah. we were there, we were, I was busy five, six nights a week. Yeah. Comedy here, you Me go... Too. The comedy store was fa fucking fantastic, if not one of the best clubs in the world. Absolutely. You know, you want to explain to our listeners what the London, England comedy store is like? Pardon? Hello? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> Hello? Hey, uh, the comedy store in London. Uh, yeah, fantastic place. Nowadays, so hard to uh, break into the weekend. Yeah, I used to do that place twice a year. <laughs> yeah. It was great. There was a lot of stuff. And then, but you're, are you currently living in England now? No, no, I'm now in Spain. You're in Spain. How far are you from Malaga? Yeah. From what? Malaga. Malaga. Uh, about an hour flying. Okay. So you've been in Spain. Are you doing comedy in Spain? 
I want to do. But I first uh, decided to uh, get back to the UK regularly. And I've done a week in uh, Oslo, which was uh, really good. Very cool. They had a, an outside gig, but it worked. Very they cool. They kind of, they decided that they want to have an outside gig, so people passing by, they can, uh, they can see what it's like. And they, they want to book a ticket for the show. Cool. We need some more live gigs. Everyone's watching comedy on yeah. the internet. Need some live performance. You ever have anything thrown at you? Uh, no. Any girls try to attack you after your show? Um, more sexually attacking. Sexually aggressive? Yes. Well, you're you're kind of an anomaly. You got a full set of teeth, and you're taller than most people. So you're like a a, a you know a London. A god. A London god, yeah. <laughs> what's what's the worst kind of British woman? Um, good question. Uh, <laughs> I, I think men, mentally, someone is really stuck stuck in her beliefs. Yeah, just very rigid, you know, and uh, blind faith. She. Sorry? Like blind faith. I don't know what it is. Blind faith? Like believing in something that you have no idea that there's yeah. no truth in it. Or... Yeah. Are it's you high? I like the political correct. And as far as the appearance, the outside, yeah, I, some, yeah, I like if it has Enough legs and arms and functions. Yeah, you know, everybody can be a friend. Could you eat out a seventy-year-old woman? Um, I've never tried. So, well, you can practice at home on a dog's ear. <laughs> <laughs> I knew. I still need to eat tonight. Did you Did you live at the house in Cranley Gardens for a while? Yes, with, with um, I mean, and uh, Kerry Mark, Nick Doody was there. Which room yeah, it was did, a nice house. Yeah, it was a great house. I lived there for a couple of years. And, uh, with, I think I've still found some of your stuff. My stuff? Like magazines. and. Uh, it's probably the shit I left behind. Mail. <laughs> yeah. Crap. Nail polish. Nail polish. Lots of it. Fish nets. <laughs> Ball gags. There was like a, a wood, wooden leg. <laughs> <laughs> With ham in the end of it. Yeah. I call it my stump fuck. <laughs> yeah. There was like a, a lots of uh, empty boxes. With uh, stuff written on it. Like? Can it be yours? Kill myself? <laughs> <laughs> there, were, there was like uh, women, women's uh, stuff. Boots. Do you like that? Sometimes I jump around in women's boots. Mm -hmm. But I go down to bars and get in fights with women's clothes on. <laughs> I go in with a broken pool cue dressed as Carol Burnett. And just start... I go, what are you looking at? And then it's on. I stand at the bar, order a drink, and then I piss out of the bottom of my dress with no underwear on. I'd love to see that. <laughs> the way you said it... You, what's full and wig and stuff... Would you consider yourself a hot woman? Would I would I consider myself a whore? No, a hot. Um, sexy. No, my my features on my face are too sharp. I couldn't make it pretty. Right. And the dick. 
It looks terrible in a mini skirt. That's true. You know, I like yeah, to wear tight fitting clothes. <laughs> what kind of woman would you be? Um, I would be. Um, I don't know. Just sitting in a, in a cafe, very. <laughs> it would be very like old fashioned. <laughs> really like. Uh, like Central Anna Green Gables. Gables you know? Do you know Anna Green Gables? Yeah. Would you be like Anna Green Gables, no. but like? I would be like Mrs. Doubtfire. Ah. Yeah, with my Larry Harry legs in the bus and say, "What are you looking at?" Yeah. Would you Would you try and fake it, like get into a relationship and hide the uh, your balls? <laughs> I think I would just try. You'd be like. I'm gonna put this this cup over my uh, my belly button because I'm sensitive about it, and then you can fuck me in the mud hole. Sounds romantic. <laughs> We're face to face. What is that? Face to face. face-to-face? Yeah, like when you're Talking. fucking face-to-face, you look into the victim's eyes. I think it's all dark. You think, you think in your fantasy it's all dark? Yeah. <laughs> Don't tell me that's a hard-on. Just tell me it's a conjoined twin or something. Yeah, it's always yeah, too dark. It's just a lot of touching. But, you, but you've seen... Pornography since you were little growing up in Holland? Uh, no, not really. My, my were... dad had some magazines, I remember. Who but we... we hardly had uh, television. Really? We, we grew up without television. Oh, in a farm. Yeah, uh, imagination. What did you do for fun? Like shoot animals and shit? The neighbors were into that. What they, did they... they brought us a lot of rabbits and all that. Is there times you'd be hanging around in the barn and then you'd be like, hey, there's a sheep. Looks like somebody got a haircut. No one's around. Mm-hmm. Would you put it in? I've never been advised to do that. Yeah, is my that... Dad, my dad never educated me. That, that, that was a possibility. Did you quit drinking because of that? It's 10 o'clock. Yeah. At the age of 12, I was like massive alcoholic. And <laughs> I was just uh, stop this shit. You, you were a massive alcoholic at 12? <laughs> what were you drinking? We were really very free. I, I remember that the drink at a very early age. Really? So then I lost interest before I even uh, hit 18. Yeah. That can go one of two ways. Some people are more inherently to become destroyed by it. But then you're like, oh, I've been drinking since I was four. I think I'm going to quit when I'm 18. But you, but you, when I, so I remember that when we we're in Amsterdam, we're walking around. You don't smoke marijuana or drink. No. Ever. I, I drink sometimes. And recently, there was someone, a friend of mine, gave me some uh, wheat granola. Oh, it's delicious. I ate it, and it was delicious. But I, I wanted to go to sleep right away. I fell asleep in the garden, and I, and I thought all the time I woke up, I thought, are these people real who walk here and standing, staring at me while I'm sleeping? You passed out in someone's garden? Yeah. <laughs> Naked? But uh, I think I was pretty close. Aroused? No, I was too tired for that. So it was just in I your, just, you just had it in your hand? It, real. it was just in your hand. Huh? I don't know anymore. <laughs> uh, are you 
from the police? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm just taking a report. <laughs> There's a petition going around in your neighborhood to get rid of you. Right. I heard about this. Would you... Uh, who, what's the worst... Describe your worst roommate. You don't have to name names, but what was the worst roommate? The worst one was... Uh, he, he was always saying, I don't know what to do with my life. And he was... Whenever I came home, he was always playing guitar very loud <laughs> and screaming like a child. And... Uh, <laughs> And then I would come in and uh, he would stop playing and then he would just moan all the time. He didn't know what to do with his life. And should he stop taking his ben benefits? Sounds uh, like a real yeah. winner. Sorry? Was it a comedian? Uh, yeah. That happens. You run into some losers. <laughs> yeah. But the, the house in Manchester was great. Yeah? We had a Canadian, Australian, and we had one student because that helped to bring down the council tax. Yeah, you could... If you have one student in the house, then you have to pay less council tax. Oh, really? Yeah. Fuck, they tax you like a motherfucker in England. Yes. It was... I it... Had I was there a week, and someone uh, came knocking on the door, and uh, I was watching TV. And <laughs> he said, uh, yeah, I can see you have a TV. And I said, yeah, yeah. And uh, what's your name and that stuff? And then two weeks later, we got a letter, or I got a letter. that I had to appear in court for not paying TV license. Fuck. Yeah, they come to your house. You're flat. Yeah. And, and then uh, my housemate, we discussed it, and he, he played me. He said, you never open the curtain. <laughs> Everything is closed, and you never enter the door. <laughs> You're a prisoner. Yeah, I was a prisoner and going to another prison. Well, it's very uh, Robin I Hood, where the, the tax collector would come knocking on your door. Where's my money? Yeah. yeah. But now they send a letter... And then they fuck you. Yes. <laughs> but the, you have to watch on YouTube uh, people who, who uh, get rid of TV license people. It's really funny. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, it's called like how to get rid of TV license goons. So they, these guys, their job is to f go around, knock on people's door and find out yep. whether or not they're using an illegal television. I was blown away when I yes. heard that. An illegal television set. Fuck, who even watches TV anymore? I don't know, uh, slaves. True enough, the death, slaves. Death slaves. Have you ever had a sex slave? No, no, debt slave. Oh, but no sex slaves. Of course you understood that. If you had a sex slave, what would be the first thing you'd make your sex slave do? Uh, the dishes. <laughs> well, that's a, that's a great way to end the show. <laughs> sex slave, <laughs> do the dishes while I masturbate in the long chair. <laughs> Spell your name, Walter. W-O-U. W O U T E R T E R Mace M E I J S And do you use uh, Twitter? Yeah, I have like six followers. You have six followers on Twitter. Are you on? Uh, people can find you on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, yeah, anywhere. Anywhere. I I really need friends. You what? So. If, uh, I want some more friends. You want more friends? Okay, well, yeah, we'll I try. If you're, if you're listening out there in the world, my friend Walter Mace, Dutch comedian who lives in Spain, he needs some friends. He was raised on a, a small farm outside of Amsterdam uh, on an island, and uh, he's never had sex with sheep, 
and um, you know his wife shits on the floor. Pretty much sums my life up. Great. I need a drink now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope to see you uh, in the near future, Walter. Yeah. Um, are you coming to the UK? No. <laughs> but you never know I might end up in Spain I'm going to the Edinburgh Festival ooh very cool are you doing your own show uh, no I, I haven't arranged anything so I just hope to be guest spots yeah and hope that people don't boo me off that's cool uh, because an hour yeah the chance so just you do longer so lovely well more Find Walter on the internet. He's got you got some videos on YouTube that people can check out. Yes, and I'll be putting more recent stuff very uh, soon. Awesome. Well, it's uh, it's great having you on the show, and uh, I'm gonna do a couple announcements here before we wrap up. Uh, Canada Day Comedy Store, Hollywood, California. I'll be performing. Uh, alongside some of the biggest stars in comedy that are Canadian. Yeah. So you can narrow that down. And go to JasonRouse.com, JasonRouse666 on Instagram. I get a, a pretty good uh, up-to-date feed on my uh, little phone or jizzleism, jizz journalism that I do. And uh, thanks for listening to the show. Bye. Don't kiss me on the mouth. Don't ask if you're hurting me. And if you hear the safe word, stop what you're doing immediately. Do you have pantyhose? <laughs>